Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to manage your labels. We'll take an in-depth look at the Gantt labels. So to start, I'm going to make my Gantt pretty big here. It takes up most of the screen. And that way we don't have to worry about any other distractions. And to explain my model here, we've got a bunch of jobs kind of grouped together. Um, you'll see that uh, the, each block looks like a flag, and, and that's basically the label. Um, and we're going to go through each label setting. Uh, so what I'm going to do here first uh, is zoom in to one of the activity blocks or operations. I'm going to make this pretty big, pretty wide, so we can see what's happening here. Maybe that's a little too big. Let's do that. Perfect. Okay, so to access the label configurator, it's right at the top of the Gantt uh, menu bar. It says labels, this little purple label icon. Go ahead and click that. And I am going to move this a little more so we can see the Gantt label options. There we go. Now we can see the dialog box and the Gantt at the same time. So, yes, first reaction is there's a lot going on in here. And um, it'll be much clearer uh, once we work through everything here. So, um, basically what you have are each Gantt block, each operation, is segmented out. Uh, e there's different types of segments. Um, you can see here there's timing, commitments, attributes, process, status, priority, buffer pen penetration, uh, and percent finished. Um, so you see how this block here, I've got four bands of colors. Those four bands of colors correspond to the checkboxes that I have here. So the top band is timing, which is green. The second band is commitment, which is white. I'm showing some attributes. I'm showing product color for my third band which is this uh, beige color. And then I'm showing my per percent finished uh, at the bottom here. So let's start. Um, let's just go through each segment type, and then we'll get into the Gantt labels um, and some other options that you have. So let's start with the timing. I'm showing timing. Um, we've got on time, which is green here. We've got almost late. Um, so almost late and almost early are pretty similar in that you can set almost late and almost uh, two early thresholds. So if a job is starting earlier than the threshold, it's going to be that kind of off-white color. Um, if it's on time, it's green within you know within the thresholds. And if it's almost late, um, you know if you set the almost late threshold of for one day. That means if it's one day of being late, it'll turn yellow. Similar to this uh, job I have up here, right here. Uh, late is denoted by orange. Red is a capacity bottleneck. So let me move this job here just a little bit this way. And you'll see it spans over its need date. It becomes late, so it turns red on the top. And you can think of the capacity bottleneck. It's the first operation in the job that is late. So it's your bottleneck for that job. That's the one operation that's late. You've got to fix that. Similar with the material bottleneck, if it's bottlenecked because of capacity, it's red. But if it's bottlenecked because of a material, uh, then it is the uh, pinkish purple color. And if it's bottlenecked uh, because of its release date, then it's a pale pink color. So that's the timing segment. Um, commitment flag. Um, each job can be classified as um, an estimate, a planned order, a firm job, or a uh, released job. Um, so let's see, I can show, I can just turn that on and apply, and you'll see that we have different um, color codings for those. What I think I'm going to do is back up just a touch 
and turn on the um, individual segment labels. It'll be a, even a little more clear. Um, and then we'll get into how you set these uh, labels after. So there we have it. Now you can see um, I put some words in over the colors. So commitment, we went over. Attributes, um, you have the ability to um, set colors for on the job level, on the product. Um, you can have a setup color. Um, and you can also have, uh, if you have custom attributes on the job, you can set colors for those as well. So let's show that if I apply. So that's this fourth band down here. I'm going to get rid of percent finished. If I were to show more bands and I apply that, that bottom band would just get separated more. <laughs> so it gets a little confusing, but um, self-explanatory if you if you add if you add labels uh, along with the colors works pretty well. Okay, uh, so I would say timings the probably the uh, most common that you'd use out of these three. The next most common is the process uh, segment. Process segment tells you what stage the job is in. So it'll tell you uh, if it's setting up, if it's running, if it has post-process time, if it's in storage, like if it's in a tank, or if it's in the uh, storage po post-process. So um, you can see this job number J25 has an hour of setup. So it's showing a little red, and then it's got four hours of runtime. That's pretty straightforward. Status flag here, apply. Um, we have some readies. We have some started. Uh, this will show you if the material sources are unknown uh, for your job. That'll show you if you if the material sources are planned. It'll show you if the job is on hold, if it's waiting, um, meaning uh, if it's not being held up for anything. It's just it's just waiting for the the uh, predecessor operation to complete. Uh, if it's ready to start, if it's started. And then, of course, if it's setting up, running, if it's in post-processing, if it's uh, transferring, or if the job is paused. Priority is pretty easy. You can set a priority per job. Um, essentially, it's red if it's one, orange if it's two, uh, yellow if it's three. And if it's higher than uh, three priority, then it's just white. Buffer penetration. If you have uh, DBR set up in Planet Together, uh, you can set different penetration um, thresholds, and um, I think default they're set at th about uh, a third, 33%, um, but uh, you get the different warning levels there. And of course, the uh, other um, popular segment is the percent finished, which will show you, if we look at job number 21 here, let me uh, zoom in. Job number 21, I think it requires probably five, um, a quantity of five, and two have been completed, so it's showing that it's 40% finished, so it's a little status bar. Another option is this highlight unreviewed jobs. So if you bring new jobs into the schedule um, and optimize them on, they will turn pink like this, just like J6. And if I want to review that job, then I can just simply click on the job and it will turn back to, uh, to its normal color. But it's, it's a way to keep track of new orders coming into the, onto the Gantt. Okay, so let's take a look at um, how to change the labeling. So you saw me at first, uh, I switched from a single uh, block label to individual segment labels. That lets you use the individual segment uh, sections here. If I just use a single block label, just uh, my single um, label appears at the top. So to edit the labels, I can come in here to edit the single block label. I just come into this dialog and it gives me a work area on the right and all the objects on the left. And there's a bunch. So say I want my job need date. For example, I can come to job need date and I just drag it over to the right hand side. Job need date, save and close. And now I see I have a need date here. And I can go down as far as I want. If I use the individual segments, 
I can set a label per segment, and those are controlled in each of the segment labels. So same data, uh, same data. Uh, I have to pick from anything, um, but I can apply them uh, per per segment, which is which is nice for keeping your data organized. You also have the tooltip text. Um, tooltips by default use the single block label as their default text, um, but you can add extra text to the tooltip. In this case, um, it looks like it has an internal um, internal activity Slack. So I can show you if I turn on the tooltip and I hover over job here. It's showing me a, a slack of 2.12 days underneath my single block label. Um, the, the settings I have for the single block label. Go ahead and apply this. There we go. There's also a little legend here for border meetings on jobs. Um, you notice let's see we've got um, the black bars meaning it's uh, constrained if the job was locked or operation was locked um, there would be a blue bar on the top if it's anchored it would be basically surrounded on the left right and bottom by blue if the job was hot it would uh, turn red let's let's take a look and make sure let's see if I can turn a job hot See if I remember how to do this. There we go. Priority. Let's scroll back over here. Let's see here that job is surrounded by in red. There's a couple other lines. All right. So, see that hot job there. So that covers the main uh, scheduling operations tab of the, uh, the labels dialog. If we keep moving to the right, um, there's something in Plant Together called Track Actuals. So using uh, this feature, you can track the history of a job when it finished, and you can show that. Basically, you can see on the Gantt, there's this gray section, which is behind the clock. Um, so if I have Track Actuals turned on, I would see um, my finished dates and, and quantities over here. And those have certain colors associated with them. We have some custom settings for some uh, some flags, some job flags, which uh, do require custom coding. So I won't get into that too much. Um, but then we have a really important tab: label formatting. So you can choose whether to have the text horizontal or vertical. If I um, click vertical, you see what I mean. It, uh, flips the text. You can wrap the text. Um, you can do some speed enhancements here using uh, solid colors instead of dithering colors. It may um, increase performance. Um, not too important though. And then you have the ability to change your font. So I can make, make the uh, font bigger. I can make them bold and whatever font I want. Hit OK, apply, and you see now my font's changed. So that's helpful if, uh, if it's hard to see the Gantt for you. There's a lot of information there. So having the ability to change the text is really helpful. So I think that just about covers the labels. Um, but if you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks for watching.